Yo, it's me, I'm back. My hair's longer, crazy how that happens. Today I wanted to make a little video about why girls and those assigned female at birth are diagnosed way later than boys and why there's some misconceptions about girls with autism. Because a lot of people just really don't understand it and that's why so many girls go misdiagnosed for years. Current estimates are that boys are four times more likely than girls to receive a formal autism diagnosis. But experts are realizing that the rates are kind of the same between men and women. Recent research shows that nearly 80% of females are undiagnosed diagnosed at age of 18. So why does this happen? Why are they more likely to receive a diagnosis in adulthood? I am so glad you asked. In this video I'll be talking generally about girls and those assigned female at birth. More than just cis women are affected by the biases done by mental health professionals. For example, trans men and non-binary AFAB people are also affected by this bias even if they don't identify as female. Essentially if you've been raised and perceived as a girl, no matter what your identity is now, you are likely to have been subject to a lot of these biases. So this this is probably applicable to lots of other people too. Anyway, <laughs> for so many years experts have assumed that autism occurs more often in males than females and now we know that that is not true. But because of this lots of research over the years has been done predominantly on males so lots of the diagnostic criteria and just the things that we understand about the condition is about the ways that men experience it. And as a result, boys are referred for an autism diagnosis 10 times more than girls. The very diagnostic criteria being based on men is then biased towards boys receiving more of the diagnosis. Diagnoses? This is confusing. But even when professionals understand the differences in the ways that autism presents in girls, there is also an unconscious gender bias. The subconscious gender bias that doctors hold results in them giving fewer autism referrals to women. That sentence was really hard for me to get out. So what are some of the differences that doctors need to be aware of? Females report more sensory symptoms and fewer communication difficulties than males. They tend to be more socially motivated to form friendships and find ways to participate in conversations with others. Personally, I think this is probably a lot to do with just societal expectations and the pressure that is put on women. Girls receive punishment for not performing and there is a lot of pressure to mask. As these sensory issues often present as anxiety, doctors take this and the lack of communication difficulties as a sign that they're not autistic. Which isn't true, isn't true, autism is a spectrum. Boys managing autism may experience obvious difficulties with sitting still, aggression or conduct. Girls are more likely to respond to autism internally developing anxiety or depression. Their response may look like shyness, a socially acceptable norm for girls. Obviously girls can respond externally but more often than not these pressures mean that we keep it inside. We're punished from a young age and learn to mask. The other symptoms we show that present like shyness are expected of girls a lot of the time and so often healthcare professionals don't recognize this as an issue. A girl could be really struggling and they'll be like no she's just shy don't worry about it. Also girls often have more socially acceptable special interests just because of the way that we're socialized. A girl being obsessed with horses or a celebrity brings a lot less attention than a boy obsessed with trains. Not, not to say that girls can't be obsessed with trains. Hi, that's me. It's just a lot more obvious when it's a stereotypical special interest. Whoa, that's hard. But a girl that's obsessed with like a specific era of history and really dedicated to their studies at school, that's not as questionable as a lot of the more known male special interests. A combination of all of these things means that women need to present with more autism symptoms to be diagnosed at the same level as boys. Research shows that there is a clear gender bias here. Another big thing that I've touched on a little bit as well is the fact that those assigned female at birth are more likely to mask and they mask for so much longer than boys. With masking being so ingrained into the way that we socialize, it can take a long time for AFABs and girls to realize that they might be autistic themselves. I'm my socks on comfy, sorry, hang on. It can be really difficult to figure out what's wrong and it takes a while to discover it yourself if you've been hiding it from yourself. If that makes any sense to someone that hasn't experienced this. So not only is the diagnostic criteria biased towards boys, it might not accurately depict what it is like to be a girl with autism. We make it even harder by hiding our autistic traits during the evaluations. Whether intentional or not, we're really good at pretending to be normal. I know tone indicators are for like written things, but I feel like that might need a slash J. I mean neurotypical. Although if you ask me, neurotypicals are the fucking weird ones. Anyway, 
I'm very lucky in that eventually a GP I spoke to had a little bit more of an understanding of autism in girls and picked up the traits that I had thought for so many years were anxiety because so many healthcare professionals had told me it was anxiety. It's not, I'm just in sensory hell. I'd masked my symptoms and been misunderstood for 17 years before a healthcare professional suggested autism being a possibility for me. Many autistic girls who go undiagnosed experience lots of mental health problems and many of the coping strategies, talking therapies and medications are are just not helpful for a while because you're not looking at it from the right perspective which is autism. It's really difficult to get something good out of talking therapies when we don't understand our needs or what we're feeling with like alexithemia, is that how you say it? Girls and AFABs are commonly diagnosed with things like bipolar, depression, schizophrenia, OCD, that's a big one, that's one I have. I found a study where 228 autistic people out of 295 said they were misdiagnosed, that is 77% of the respondents, that's insane. And it's really sad to think that they could have been getting help and kick the camera. They could have been working to improve their mental well-being and they just hadn't been looking at it from an autistic perspective and so they just couldn't get better. It's really sad. Obviously things can help. Generalised anxiety coping techniques will probably be good for lots of people but when you are autistic and your brain works differently it's really important to understand what you need and adjust most things to be honest there's a lot of adjustments that go on <laughs> but yeah meltdowns can present like panic attacks and i thought i was having panic attacks for lots of years and they were just meltdowns uh sensory issues can present like anxiety and things like low self-worth from just being different in a world that is not catering towards our needs societal misunderstandings can present like depression in someone that is just struggling. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm there's a point here somewhere. Please find it. I don't I don't want to do it. Why is it bad? Why is it bad? Because it is. I said so end of video. Masking symptoms and lacking coping skills and accommodations is often linked to bad mental health and suicide. The sooner you realise you're autistic, the sooner you can start making changes to feel better. I keep waving my hands. No, I I know. No apologizing. <coughs> Late diagnosed autistic children often have higher levels of mental health and social difficulties prior to their autism diagnosis. They tend to develop even more severe problems as they enter adolescence. There's a significant association between late diagnosis in adulthood and a lower quality of life. Studies show that earlier diagnosis is really beneficial for quality of life and mental well-being. So despite what a lot of people's misconceptions are, girls and those assigned female at birth are just as likely to have autism as boys. We can present in similar or different ways to that of boys, but the misconceptions and misunderstandings by a lot of healthcare professionals and the general public mean we often go misdiagnosed until way later in life. Research suggests that finding out you're autistic is so cool. That's the official study. It, it literally says you will be so epic, mega swag, hip hop skibbity. I found something really nice where this person described it as a signpost that provided answers and guidance on how to approach life differently and feel proud of one's identity. Diagnosis brought relief, clarity, access to appropriate support and personal advocacy. There is so many great things that can come with finding out you're autistic. Early detection enables timely interventions, tailored educational approaches and access to support services, all of which contribute to better outcomes for autistic individuals. We need more awareness, more acceptance and more societal and professional awareness of how the gender differences impact autistic people. Thank you very much for watching this. If you have been diagnosed later in life or have got anything to share about this, please feel free to pop a little something, pop a little something below. It's been really nice seeing all your comments on the previous videos I've made about autism. I'm really glad that you can find them helpful, relatable. I have a lot more planned, so stay tuned, subscribe, give it a like and share it too. This feels so disingenuous, what the fuck? Even though I didn't get diagnosed until I was 19, it was a healthcare professional that recognized it and suggested it when I was around 17. The process was kind of simple for me. I didn't have to fight massively to get my diagnosis. But if you want to hear any more about that, let me know. I stream on Twitch. Um, I just spat. Come watch me play games and stuff. I'm playing The Last of Us at the minute. I got some, I got some cool things lined up and I got a bunch more neurodiverse content coming your way. Motherfuckers. Can I go now? Thank you. <laughs>